Today we're giving my doorman Arlo here a bath and uh, it's probably gonna get a little crazy knowing Arlo. So besides having, I'm sure, tons of fun today, we're also gonna learn the best way to give a doberman a bath. And it's one of those few things that really is different with the doberman breed from other breeds. So let's get going. actually have a pretty special treat for you guys today. I'm really excited about this. You may not have known, but I'm actually in the process right now of creating just what I think is the most game-changing Doberman ownership course that's ever been made. And I'm actually really excited about this. I don't want to get too much in the details of it because it's still kind of taking shape. But this is not just a typical like how to train your dog course at all. This is a complete Doberman ownership course focused on this breed. And I'm just really excited about what it means in terms of making the Doberman breed more manageable for the average household. Um, so today is gonna be a sneak peek into that course. This is one of the lessons, an unreleased lesson that will be in this course. Um, and I'm releasing it here today on YouTube for free, all about bathing the Doberman. So enjoy. How often should you bathe your Doberman? Well, the great thing about the Doberman breed uh, in general is that they like to stay clean just naturally. Not only that, but they have a really short uh, coat with thick, coarse fur that doesn't really hold on to dirt very easily. So between just wanting to stay clean and their fur that's really conducive to staying clean, they do a pretty good job. And a lot of owners go a long time in between baths. Uh, it depends, of course, largely on your uh, activity level for your dog, how often they're outdoors, and just that kind of thing. But here's a table to give you a good basic guideline about how often you should be bathing your Doberman. For Arlo's case, especially lately, he's been indoors a lot. We've had some bad weather. So, um, and he just kind of naturally likes to stay clean. Six to eight weeks is definitely fine for him. In fact, full disclosure, I've gone a little bit longer than that on this last stretch, just because again, the weather and him being inside and I've been giving him those wipe downs uh, with baby wipes every now and then, which certainly helps as well. But that just is a guideline to get you started. Elderly dogs and puppies, our course are gonna be a little bit different. Um, but, uh, you know, again, even with these long stretches, never had any issues with bad smells from him or anything like that. So that's about how often you should do it, but, you know, gauge it based on your dog. Uh, so let's jump straight into how to go about bathing them. All right, you're gonna need a few things uh, to get this bath going with your dog. One of them is I like to have three towels personally. One of them, I just lay down in the bottom for some traction. So he's got something to stand on and to sit on. You can always use one of those bath mats like for kids or rubber mats, that kind of thing. But I just throw a towel in there. Another towel to dry him off at the end. And I always have a third towel on hand because well, you know what happens and sometimes these things get messy, especially if you're doing it inside. Um, I like to have uh, two microfiber cloths just to wipe them down after. I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, also, it's not bad to have cotton balls if you just wanna like stick them in his ears to help keep the ears dry. It's really not 100% necessary if you're not posting your dog's ears um, because when you're posting them, they have to stay really, really dry in there. Uh, Arlo's far past that. I'm not gonna use them, but depending on your dog, you may want them. Uh, to help keep the ears dry. Also a hyperallergenic or a pH balanced shampoo of some kind that's just really gentle on the skin. This is the one that I like right now. Um, my you know, recommendations can change from time to time. I always keep them in the description down below so you can take a look at that. But, um, but this is the one I'm using right now. It's very gentle. And a lot of the techniques and stuff that you're gonna see in this video is all about making it gentle because Dormans have really sensitive skin. Um, so that is really important to keep in mind. Also, for me anyway, I use one of these little sprayer heads. It just makes things easier to rinse them off. And of course, a leash to help uh, control the dog because you're gonna see it's gonna get a little crazy. He really doesn't like these baths very much. Um, and you may want a second person to help you. That's probably ideal. I'm not gonna have a second person today. So things might get a little bit iffy. And actually a lot of you have said, uh, man, Arlo is such a perfect dog. Well, he's definitely not perfect and you're probably gonna see it today. Um, because like I said, he's not a huge fan of baths. But okay, let's jump straight into the first step. Okay, step one, we're just gonna run the water, get it to about room temperature. You don't want a cold bath, that's uncomfortable for him, but you also don't want a hot bath either, or even a warm bath. You want room temperature. That's really important for Dobermans because when it is a warm bath, it opens up their pores, it allows more of the chemicals and stuff in the shampoo to get in, and it really increases the chances of having a reaction to the shampoo. One of the biggest problems with bathing a Doberman is that they can end up with like red bumpy skin, they can have different types of weird reactions, dry skin, flaky skin, dandruff. 
So in order to avoid that, really, please have it just like exactly room temperature. It would be a temperature that for you and me would probably be a little uncomfortable, um, a little cool feeling, but for a Doberman, it's totally fine. Trust me. I'm going to also lay down a towel in the bottom to give him some traction and um, get him in the tub, wet him down a little bit. This is where he tends to really start to not like things, but that's the way it goes. And um, just try to get him comfortable with it. I'm just going to sit with him for a minute or two, try to get him comfortable with the water and being wet down um, with this little spray head here. Uh, and you're gonna want the spray head to be as gentle as possible, like on the lowest setting. Because again, that those hard streams from a spray head like this um, can dig into the skin and also really get the shampoo injected in. So you're gonna want this really gentle stream. Um, so let's get started. So I'm just wetting them down really gentle. You see how slow this flow is of this water here? It's really gentle. I'm just getting them wet and just used to the, uh, just used to the water. Good boy. I'm making sure I'm reassuring him. He must know he's on camera because usually uh, he's a little bit more resistive than this. He's actually, I'm really proud of him. He's actually doing really good right now. Okay, he's, he's pretty well used to the water now. He's not um, very fearful or anything like that. He seems fairly relaxed. So I think we can go on to the next step and get him lathered up. Okay, now that he's wetted down, we're gonna apply the shampoo and get this guy clean. Uh, for your shampoo, you're gonna wanna use the minimum amount really that the bottle recommends. Um, you don't need a lot of shampoo, whatever type you're using. You may even wanna consider diluting it down with water depending on how sensitive your dog's skin is. Once you get the shampoo, lather them up from the head down to the uh, feet, starting from the top, work your way down, using the pads of your fingers only. You don't wanna use the nails and dig in, that'll only irritate the skin. Use the pads of your fingers, go with the grain of the hair, um, applying, you know, kind of firm, kind of light, light, firm pressure, not much, with just the pads as you work in the shampoo, going in that same direction as the fur lies. Um, all these things are to keep them from having any kind of reaction to the shampoo that you use, which again is so common with Dobermans. So, um, and then also check the bottle of your shampoo, by the way, to see if your manufacturer recommends you leaving the shampoo in the dog's hair. Um, if that's the case, you might need to leave it in for a little bit before you rinse it out. But a lot of them, most of them, I think you can just rinse out right away. Oh, and one last thing, while you're lathering up, make sure you focus extra on the bottom of the dog, their chest, their uh, feet and their legs, because those areas seem to get the dirtiest the quickest. So really focus there. Okay, let's go into it. Actually, if your dog's anything like Arlo, you might be surprised how much they like this. Pretty well lathered up. 
Uh, he's ready to be rinsed down now, and there's not going to be a lot of bubbles usually because you're going to be using either a mild shampoo or maybe you water down your shampoo. Um, but I've cleaned him pretty good from head to toe, focusing on the areas underneath and on his paws. And uh, now we're ready to rinse him off. So when you're rinsing them off, just again, use the gentlest flow possible, uh, room temperature water, and get as much soap out as possible because you don't wanna leave any behind because that increases the chances of a bad reaction with your skin. So uh, this guy is definitely ready to get rinsed off. So uh, let's get going. It's so important to use a room temperature water while you're doing this because think of it, if you're using really hot warm water and you have them all lathered up, now you've just opened up all the pores with the shampoo sitting there, which will just suck in those chemicals in that shampoo and uh, really increases, even if it's natural shampoo, really increases the chances of having a reaction. And it's just, it's just really important. Again, I'm using the pads of my fingers even as I'm rinsing them down. Okay, now that he's all rinsed off, we're gonna dry him off basically to get most of the water off. The great thing with the Doberman is you can use your hands almost like a squeegee and just kind of squeeze his fur, um, his body as you go, and it'll take most of the big clumps of water off if you just squeeze and push down as you go. And you can do that all the way down his legs and it'll get most of the water off of him, which is a great thing. Then we're gonna dry him off with a towel and use a microfiber cloth to give him a uh, brushing or basically an excuse for a brushing, which is a little gentler on the skin. So let's get going because this guy looks eager to, uh, to get dried off. And same thing with the drying, try to dry in the same direction as the fur lies, just to keep irritation to a minimum. Okay, that's it. Uh, he's all dry and now he's gonna just do donuts and go crazy for a good 10 minutes or so. So this is the part of the bathing process where a lot of owners will take a stiff bristle brush and brush down their dog. That is like probably the worst thing you can do for a Doberman, um, especially right after a bath when their skin is the most sensitive. So you don't wanna use a stiff brush like that. I love to use a little microfiber cloth like this. It gets kind of the same effect as a brush as far as pulling out the hair and redistributing the oils throughout the coat naturally. And it's a lot gentler, which is nice. So I'm gonna rub him down with this instead of a brush. Come here, buddy. Good boy, and that's it. Basically, it's um, the way of brushing, so it's a lot gentler, hey, leave it, um, on their skin. And if your Doberman suffers from chronic dry skin and uh, issues with their fur, this might be the time where you'd wanna apply a hydrating spray of some kind on their coat if you're using something like that. Um, uh, speaking to you fawn Doberman owners out there and your blue Doberman owners out there, because I know you guys struggle with that a lot. Um, so during this brush down part with a microfiber cloth, that's when you wanna spray it down and wipe them up. Um, and uh, yeah, but he's, He's all good to go. Believe it or not, bathing a Doberman is a whole lot different than bathing many other breeds out there, guys. And as you can see, a lot of the tweaks that we make to the typical bathing process for a typical dog is really focused around making it as gentle as possible on their skin. That way you can avoid that common issue many Dobermans have of red bumpy skin, itchy dry skin, and that kind of thing. A lot of that can be reactions that take place because of the shampoo you use or things involved during the bathing process. So that's why we do a lot of things differently with Dobermans. Guys, this is just one lesson of a complete Doberman ownership course that's unreleased right now. I'm still working on it. Still has a lot of work to go, to be honest, so it's a little ways out. But if you're interested in being one of the first to be notified when this course is available, go to DobermanPlanet.com slash newsletter. Again, DobermanPlanet.com slash newsletter. Enter in your name and your email address there, and you'll be one of the first people to know when this course goes live. But it's still a little ways out, so definitely have a little patience because I'm fine-tuning. I want it to be the best possible complete guide for Doberman owners that there I could possibly create. So, um, and hey, if you just wanna nerd out on this bath stuff a little bit more and you have more questions about bathing, take a look in the description down below. I'll link to my free guide on my website all about bathing your Doberman. It talks a lot of in-depth stuff in there like uh, bathing Doberman puppies, bathing elderly Dobermans and Dobermans in heat, uh, and even uh, linking to a lot of the products that I recommend for giving your Doberman a bath. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I'm glad you were there. I was bathing Arlo on my own, so it was good having you there. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below, and of course, see you next time. Oh,